بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیو ویورز السلام علیکم آئی ایم یو ہوز فیصل رضا خان اینڈ یو آر واچنگ فور سائڈ ویورز ارتھ از لارجلی اے بلو پلانٹ اٹ از بیکاز سیونٹی پرسینٹ آف اٹس سرفیس ایریا از کورڈ بائی واٹر سو ایز دا سیونٹی پرسینٹ آف اٹس ویلتھ دا ٹریڈ پروفٹس اینڈ ٹریئرس آر ایٹ سی مینس دا بلو اکانومی از ورتھ ٹریلینس آف ڈالرس اینڈ شپ بلڈنگ از one of such treasure soon after independence pakistan got its first ever ship building industry in 1956 when karachi shipyard and engineering works was established karachi shipyard and engineering works performed very well it is a profitable organization built over 500 commercial and naval vessels repaired more than 5000 of the vessels including 230 of the foreign flag carriers but unfortunately despite of lots of demand of the ship building repair and maintenance during the last seven and a half decades no other shipyard added to the national arena it is direly needed that right at the footstep of karachi shipyard and engineering works some more shipyards like at kawada and at port kasim karachi must have to be there along with other shipyards wherever it is applicable at different sites to talk on this very important subject we have in our studios rear admiral retired mozum elias he has an ample experience as a maritime expert as he has spent more than half of his life in pakistan navy most welcome to you mozum sir thank you very much for uh, being here in the studios and along with him we have uh, online vice admiral retired ahmed saeed he is the president national institute of maritime affairs he is also an experienced personality when it comes to the maritime affairs most welcome to you uh, vice admiral ahmed saeed sahab my first question to you uh, ahmed saeed sahab that uh, why why pakistan ship building industry particularly it has not much flourished over the years with only one shipyard so what's the main reason behind why we are lagging thank you raza saab i think in your intro you have highlighted that we have only one shipyard that was uh, constructed in some way way back in 1956 but before that if we go uh, towards the independence at that time we had one shipyard which was in chittagong and uh, that was after the uh, 71 that went to the uh, bangladesh so uh, if we compare it as you said that uh, this is a flourishing industry uh, this is exactly because at the moment uh, it is especially in the asia it is coming up very well about uh, 80% of the total freight being uh, taken care of is by the uh, container ships uh, in pakistan in particular we are lacking merely because of uh, our leadership vision i would say some long term policies and uh, within that the sustainable policies now uh, coupled with that we have also the green shipping policies which are coming up which we need we'll have to take care and beside that we have uh, the resource constraint at the moment uh, plus uh, then we have the security overlap so these are coupled with all that it is coming out to be that we are seriously lacking Uh, why did i gave the example of bangladesh because now bangladesh has 20 23 yards and at the same time bangladesh uh, if we see the uh, india they have 43 yards not only they are looking after and taking care of their own uh, uh, ships requirements they are also now the exporting uh, ships countries and they are earning huge uh, exchequer so that these are the multiple factors i say that uh, we have and because of that we are lacking in this uh, particular so as, area as 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 you uh, very pertinently said uh, karachi shipyard and engineering works has uh, 
uh, already built and repaired um, uh, uh, 17,000 tons and then uh, to 26,000 tons of uh, uh, different uh, uh, tonnage ships and carriers and all that. So why we are uh, uh, lacking in this area as well, why we, we are not uh, going beyond uh, the heavy bulk carriers, uh, the cargoes and oil tankers, why we are not building that? Yeah, uh, Karachi shipyard has certain limitations. Uh, first and the foremost is the channel. The kind of channel Karachi shipyard has, it has issues regarding to the dead weight, uh, weight tonnage. So it can handle, uh, because of that, the lowest, uh, we call it the handy size ships, which are from 10 to 50 K. So that is the reason we require more shipyards which are, which have a deeper accessible channels mm. so that we are able to catch the bigger ships construction uh, industry so this is the one area i think which uh, is the predominantly which is lacking uh, which has the uh, problem as far as the karachi shipyard is concerned we can incrementally uh, increase the size but not to the limit which we are looking at like the uh, the highest ships which we are seeing at the ULCC, which is about 320 Ks and beyond. So for that, we need a dedicated shipyard need to be built, which has an excess capacity as well as the resources and downstream industries, upstream industries and linkages uh, with the uh, uh, suppliers. Because nowadays the ship uh, building is has come down to uh, assembling. Most of it is assembling. Uh, a couple of years it used to be 30% assembling, rest all is, but now it is reducing at the moment I think it is close to 20%. Rest all is the suppliers uh, chain management. So these are the things which needs to be looked into so that we have, and we have the potential along the coast. Already I think four places have been identified where we can have uh, uh, big industry in terms of uh, ship construction yards. So it is only the need from the government side to put our house in order. I think last meeting which was held by the uh, former caretaker prime minister in that he had uh, given uh, instructions to boost the process of acquiring the land and all these things which are required definitely, for Definitely. You are absolutely right. Absolutely right. Mohsen Yasab, when uh, we are talking about uh, uh, dead weight uh, tonnage uh, and that must have to be beyond uh, what is the what is required at the international level mm -hmm. at least it must be uh, beyond uh, 250,000 uh, to 600,000 uh, uh, so that as uh, uh, Saeed Sahib has said it is very important that uh, uh, that uh, shipbuilding yard or uh, uh, that shipbuilding facility must have to be accessible uh, the channel must have to be deep so that uh, heavy tonnage ships could have to be accommodated. So do you think that such type of uh, shipbuilding, repair and maintenance facility is an inevitable, particularly when it comes to Pakistan's own shipping needs, Pakistan's own shipping needs, particularly in any sort of emergency? I think, uh, Faisal, you have rightly pointed out, uh, you know, we have to see what is happening in the international shipping market. Uh, at the global level, the ships that are the uh, working horse of the shipping industry, they have a tonnage uh, range from 350 or you could say 300,000 uh, tons up to 450, 500,000 uh, tons of uh, ships, dead weight tonnage. And these ships are carrying bulk of the cargo from a port point A to point B. Pakistan has lagged behind acquiring such ships primarily uh, because of a host of other reasons for which I am not going into detail because we are more concerned about the shipbuilding. If Pakistan has to participate in the global uh, shipping industry, it has to have that shipbuilding capacity. Obviously, obviously. At the moment, as you said, Karachi shipyard just has about 26,000 deadweight tonnage uh, of the ships. Last ship that it built for Pakistan Navy Shipping Corporation was uh, MB Islamabad, just about uh, you know over uh, 25,000 uh, tons, and this uh, ship is still in service. However, because the international market has moved on, and we have not, mm. the, uh, we, we are stagnant at we which stagnant. we are. 
Uh, but however, I would uh, add here that Karachi shipyard has a has a inherent uh, disadvantage of of its location. Obviously. It is located at mm. a place where it cannot expand mm. its uh, docking facility. Docking facility is the primary facility that uh, can help you increase your tonnage, where you can build bigger ships. And that was might be the prime reason why they are um, undergoing the repair activities and. Uh, or some, some some sort of maintenance activities uh, out of the channel. Uh, that is also uh, yes. we have noticed over the, yeah, over the years. Right. So uh, when we are talking about building a new or uh, developing new uh, shipyards, uh, one was proposed in Gawada, other was at the Port Qasim in Karachi. So uh, both projects are uh, lingering on since uh, 2008. Yeah. So uh, do you think how much these, are, these two projects are inevitable when uh, Karachi shipyard is already overloaded? Yeah, I, I think uh, both these projects have a very significant uh, importance for Pakistan. And I think, uh, you know, we, have, we should have pursued both these projects concurrently. However, uh, at the moment, government has approved only one project, which is uh, the shipyard at Gawadar. And uh, as per PC1, this shipyard has to have 650, up to 650,000 tons of uh, shipbuilding capacity. Uh, repair capacity, of course, is mm. part and parcel of this. Uh, should we get this project moving, you can consider that Pakistan will be amongst those top uh, 10 or 15 nations in the world which are constructing that large ships in the world. Uh, at the moment, if you if you see, we have the total shipbuilding market of 187 billion US dollars. You know, we our contribution to that market con currently is just about 0 0.00 some percentage because Karachi shipyard is not constructing the kind of ships mm, that it can sell in the international market. And if we are able to have this shipyard at Gawadar, uh, and you know fetch just about 1% of that international market, you could say a billion dollars uh, income, revenue for Pakistan per annum. Uh, definitely. Which, which is definitely mm. a big, big thing. But I uh, just want to add to that uh, decision of making a shipyard at Gawadar. It is because Gawadar is a, is a city that is coming up. Karachi has already very congested uh, space, very, a, a huge amount of facilities you know, bound together within the city, uh, Karachi and Port Qasim being one port or just ports which are co-located. So even if we go at for a shipyard at Port Qasim, I think it should not take over uh, the shipyard at Gawadar. Okay, your point well taken. Uh, so how, how at least uh, we have uh, learned that at least five years needed when you have a, a shipyard already built. So it takes at least five years to establish itself. Yes. So uh, uh, what is in case of uh, uh, the futuristic Gawada port or uh, Gawada shipyard particularly? So how do you see that uh, scenario? Yeah, I uh, personally feel that uh, looking at Gawadar, you know, it's geostrategic location. Uh, is such that if you if you look at uh, the Strait of Hormuz, almost 55,000 ships pass through that strait annually. <coughs> and because Gawadar is located at a, at a place where uh, it is just astride those sea lines of communication, we believe that uh, having a shipyard at Gawadar is going to, uh, you know, create that interest in the shipping companies, which I'm sure are going to be, uh, you know, coming in in multiple numbers towards Gawadar because Gawadar is a place where every ship is or most of the ships are passing through uh, needing periodic inspections, Obviously. Need, needing yes. maintenances, uh, repairs, uh, all repairs, that and all even, that. even sometimes you will get more business regarding repair and maintenance rather than exactly. shipbuilding exactly. and that is going to be more profitable rather than shipbuilding. Exactly. Uh, you are absolutely right on if that. I, if I also may add here that uh, you know you talked about the ancillary industry. Obviously. Uh, I feel that if Gawadar has a shipyard there are going to be a number of other industries that will perforce set up in that in that city yes. uh, and thus increasing the viability of that city. The, uh, the commercial upcoming and booming uh, industry at uh, Gawadar will help Pakistan in turn. So a shipyard at Gawadar now means, you know, no five years plan or nothing needed. Hmm. Uh, should you build Gawadar, uh, Gawadar shipyard and start building it now, it might take about two to three years. 
But within the, those two to three years, there will be business plans, there will be operational plans, and the facility can come with its full operational capability, thus supporting Pakistan's economy. Yeah, obviously, it yeah. is very important because it is going to be a real catalyst uh, of change, uh, particularly, and to attain what we desire regarding economy. Uh, Emma Saeed, when we are talking about uh, uh, the policy level interventions and uh, uh, long delays in uh, different projects, uh, do you think that uh, we have already spent uh, more than uh, seven and a half decades uh, and now we have to gear up uh, because Pakistan economy needs full thrust of uh, hard work, devotion to all sort of sorts of projects, particularly when it comes to the shipbuilding industry and Gawada. Do you think that uh, 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 your institute is working enough and uh, to sensitize not only the government, uh, uh, government uh, uh, elite, also uh, the members of the parliament and bureaucracy and all them uh, to have uh, some sort of uh, seriousness towards uh, the blue economy, particularly the shipbuilding industry. Ji, thank you. I think uh, there uh, we we, ca we can't have two opinion. What you said that uh, it's a high time to give a thrust to this industry, and uh, National Institute of Maritime Affairs is doing its utmost in terms of. Uh, uh, analyzing the policy gaps and we are sensitizing government on these policies at the same time uh, we have a program which is uh, steered by the pakistan navy uh, in the staff college where we have a complete session of all the decision makers which includes the uh, politicians bureaucrats and uh, all tiers of uh, decision makers they come in a marsu workshop and uh, Nima being part of it, we also contribute in uh, giving awareness as well as advocate on these policies. So that's what is part of uh, our area we are doing in uh, sensitizing and highlighting these issues which are coming up. But at the same time, I think it's more important at the uh, government level uh, to have uh, something, a kind of one window operation for these kind of operations. SIFC is a good success story at the moment, I think. So similarly, uh, we are urging the government to have the maritime related projects also under the same ambit so that uh, it, it gets attention and it, it gets uh, a due uh, push as well. Definitely, like uh, blue economy must have to be the a part of it as the other one like minerals and uh, defense production and uh, IT and all other uh, segments agriculture is the part of SIFC uh, so uh, that is very important if that included uh, includes into the uh, SIFC embed so that uh, you will get ample uh, success in that uh, so uh, uh, Muslim sir, when we are talking about uh, Pakistan's uh, uh, different sites which are already we are blessed with the lucrative uh, sites to have more shipyards at different areas. So, uh, uh, how do you see uh, as uh, Gavada as a state of the art and uh, technology wise a smart shipyard of the future? Yeah, uh, I, uh, you know, I look at it uh, from the angle that all the industries of the future are green industries. You know, they have to have the least of the impact on the environment and uh, the recycling has to be so efficient that whatever they emit or whatever they leave to the uh, surroundings has to be green, has to support the environment rather than damage it. Shipyards uh, also are becoming green. They, uh, you know, most of the activities that take place, the industrial activity that take place within a shipyard have been uh, cordoned, have been put in uh, under, uh, under shed and a controlled environment where even uh, you know the small air that is uh, emitted out has tr is is being treated so i i see that uh, a green shipyard at gawadar uh, a very uh, smart technology intensive yard will be a good addition to that uh, city uh, and will be a catalyst as you also pointed out a little earlier will be a catalyst for number of other industries Mm. You talk about steel industry, you talk about electronics, electrical, 
if I may differentiate? Definitely lots of uh, uh, the uh, local industries, the cottage industries, uh, utilities, utilities and all others are exactly. actually interconnected with this industry yeah. and they are going to be benefit from that. Uh, uh, Amos Haid Sahib, if you uh, just um, uh, briefly tell us about the experience of Karachi shipyard in construction of naval and commercial vessels uh, uh, under transfer of technology from different countries. We have earlier Augusta 90B submarines, uh, we have transfer of technology from France, uh, then we have uh, uh, from China, from Turkey, uh, different other countries. So how do you see that uh, aspect, how it benefit, uh, benefited Karachi shipyard and engineering works? Uh, if you allow, sir, uh, I may add to what uh, Admiral Mozam has said about the green shipping. Uh, I just refer it to COP28, whereby the uh, five big shipping companies, they have pledged that by 2030, their uh, shipping will be converted into green shipping. That is to say, the design of the ships which are coming up, it will have to bear with all the MARPOL, uh, the Maritime Pollution uh, Conventions, annexes. There are six annexes which give out the uh, detailed uh, outline of the prerequisites that the ship should be uh, green shipping in terms of its emission. So that is one point which I wanted to highlight. So that will have to be incorporated our design whenever we are coming up with this uh, uh, shipyard. So I'm Definitely. sure uh, hmm. that must have been uh, looked after. But uh, the second point coming towards uh, the Karachi shipyard, uh, although it's a, uh, it's a little uh, smaller in size as it was told but as far as the experience as far as the uh, capability and the high-tech uh, environment which they have built over the period Karachi shipyard stands out I think it has an HR which uh, which was systematically trained uh, to acquiring the transfer of technology the use of uh, because the building of commercial ships and building of the uh, uh, men of war or the submarines, it is a very high-tech uh, industry. So all the HR which has been trained during these tenures is a very high-tech at the moment. And they have their own uh, training institution, quality institutions, and all prerequisites <laughs> which are required to make uh, modern ships. So I am pretty hopeful the, the kind of capacity it has, it is being utilized to its uh, fullest. Well elaborated, well elaborated, MSA. Uh, Mozam Ilyas, if you uh, just briefly tell us about that, uh, uh, is it correct that the, if the existing facilities at the Karachi Shipyard and Engineering Works are, you have already told that uh, expansion is very difficult over there. So whether uh, we can go towards smart technologies to have uh, 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 more uh, technology oriented so that uh, it would be more productive and uh, profitable as well? Yeah, yeah. Vessel, I think... Uh there is no doubt about it. Uh, addition of new technologies or adoption to the new techniques uh, to make your production uh, facilities, production much better, uh, that is already being uh, taken by Karachi Shipyard. They have uh, very recently installed uh, a ship lift and transfer system. Yes. It is called yes. SLTS, mm -hmm. and uh, which has a capacity of uh, undertaking repairs and maintenance for a number of ships. It can also be used for construction purposes, ship building purposes but uh, it has a very important role in the ship repair, uh, submarine repair facility as well. And that uh, they are using uh, Karachi Shipyard, if I can represent them uh, here on the forum, I can tell you that they have been uh, increasing their market and businesses in the Middle East and in the regional uh, countries where the countries, where their navies need docking facility. They are offering uh, their own facilities. Of course, for a ships which are for ships which are smaller in size, uh, bigger ships are difficult to handle here. So, whatever capacity they have, they are putting it to the best use, and uh, they are also using this facility for construction of Pakistan Navy uh, vessels, uh, their submarines, and maintaining them over a period of time. So, they have uh, used all kinds of available technologies to improve their production. However, they cannot expand. They cannot increase that docking facility 
any further. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, you are absolutely right because uh, navies of the world are going towards smartness, uh, very smart ships like corvettes and something like exactly. that. And uh, But the uh, commercial shipping actually is going towards a very heavy tonnage ships. So yeah. uh, that's why in that particular category, uh, definitely beyond uh, 26,000 tons, uh, I think uh, Karachi Shipyard lacks a bit. Karachi but Shipyard has recently signed to a contract for uh, Construction of two ships for PNSC. Pa uh, PNSC, yeah, yes, yes definitely, definitely. And uh, uh, whether any sort of foreign investments on cards or the private sector to be involved in the commercial sh uh, 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 shipbuilding industry, because that is very important. Earlier, we have seen nationalization and afterwards, there were lots of uh, hurdles and hiccups in Pakistan's economy. So how do you see that area? Because that is very important. Uh, I think, Faisal, you have touched a very important uh, subject. Uh, this shipyard at Gawadar has been approved as a PPP project where uh, public private partnership public private partnership where they they need a private partner to uh, to make a partnership or make a JV plan hmm. with the Joint public venture. yes yeah so uh, the public will have an equity the uh, private partner will also have an equity until and unless we invite privates <coughs> private entrepreneurship in the shipbuilding industry the things cannot improve and things cannot move as fast as uh, you know the other countries uh, as they have moved on Obviously. for example korea japan china where the private industry has taken over the shipbuilding and has become one of the you know the, the leading companies uh, in the world china for example holds uh, about more than 50% of the shipbuilding industry Obviously, yes and most of their shipyards are privately owned although under state uh, patronage but they are uh, private uh, shipyard. I so want to. I want to take this discussion along because it's a very yes. interesting discussion. But unfortunately, we have run short of time. Thank you very much, uh, Rear Admiral, uh, retired Mozum Ilyasa, for being here in the studios. Thank you very much for your candid views and well elaborated. So nice of you. Thank you very much. I must say, sir, when we are talking about Pakistan National Shipping Corporation, as uh, Mohsen Ilyas have rightly pointed out, that uh, two of the contracts uh, 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 got by uh, Karachi Shipyard re related to some of the uh, container feeder vessel, and uh, one is the container vessel. So, uh, how do you see? Because it's a, uh, it's already a low tonnage uh, uh, ships or vessels. So. Uh, Developments are going on, uh, but we have to move on with new one, new shipyards, adding into that and along with that uh, to strengthen more the Karachi shipyard. Very rightly pointed out that uh, why container ship, number one. Reason being that at the moment, 80% of the uh, cargo being lifted at sea is through the container. This is because, the, because of the reasons that it is very safe, it is economical, because from the factory, it starts onto the truck, comes onto the port, it onto the ship, and to the customer and through the transportation. So, through the entire process, you don't have to offload the cargo, whereby you have a lot of hassles, or plus you have a wear and tear also. So, that is the kind of transportation mode which is coming very, very uh, in, in vogue at the moment. So, going into the uh, container ship, uh, building, I think it's a very right direction. And secondly, at the moment, PNSC did not have a container ship. It has a bulk cargo, it has tankers, and it has the other types of ships, but not this one. And keeping in view the business opportunities coming into the container ships is a right step. Having said that, it is a uh, it's not it's a low tonnage. I think uh, if you take the example of uh, Hyundai which is the now it's the leading uh, five uh, construction, uh, Korean construction uh, uh, shipyards. They also started off with the same. They had the uh, around the same tonnage, but at the moment they are constructing the VLCCs. So taking a step is more important and that too in the right direction. And I'm hopeful that with new yards coming up, I think we will expand our this capacity and we will have a lot of uh, uh, benefits into our national economy. Viewers, we, here we welcome uh, uh, Tanvir Sultan Awan. He is uh, uh, the senior geopolitical analyst. So most welcome to you, Tanvir sir. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time and being here in the studios. Uh, uh, when we are talking about Pakistan's uh, uh, shipbuilding industry, uh, particularly uh, uh, in that scenario, do you think that uh, Pakistan can earn billions uh, uh, through available advantage of the deep uh, seashore uh, and we have very uh, 
uh, cheap and abundant uh, labor as well, along with that, the strategic location which we have. So do you think that we are going to be have uh, more success in getting uh, profits out of this ship shipbuilding industry? Thank you. Thank you, Fazla. First of all, thank you very much for having me over. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings and Ramadan Mubarak to all the viewers. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mubarak to you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, sir. Absolutely, Fazla. There are no two opinions about it. To, as far as the opportunity is concerned to encash, we are a society of 250 million by ourselves, located right uh, around the state of Hormuz, Arabian Sea, Indo-Pacific. I mean, you name and we have all those opportunities. It's up to us how well we manage ourselves to, uh, to optimize uh, the potential of this opportunity. You see, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to give you a bird eye view of when you talk of this industry or any industry. These are generally strategic national assets. Obviously it is. Yes. And there has to be a larger general uh, program, developmental program in the country in which you manage all these strategic assets of yours. Uh, be it shipbuilding, be it aviation, be it land systems, any of them. Like in case of shipbuilding, we have uh, Karachi Shipyard Engineering Works, we have Aeronautical Complex, Kamra, we have Hay Mechanical Complex. But unless we have a composite national program to optimize all this, because the opportunity is one, just one aspect. Now, how to encash that opportunity? Definitely. The infrastructure in the country. A the strong will is required, actually. Indeed. The human resource, mm -hmm. uh, our government policies, mm -hmm. political stability, all that comes along with it to actually encash. We have done wonders in the past. We have to seriously review as to why is it so that we have not been able to, in spite of these And we are geared up to do it again, really. Indeed, indeed. I mean, as always, the always, concerned, all the time, course, really. We have bits and pieces. We are doing things in bits and pieces, actually. But uh, to, we have to have a composite approach and a policy. Fortunately, we have now a maritime uh, ministry. And I hope this, uh, the, this philosophy of blue economy, in yes. which this is one part of that, yes. we are able to encash it. Your point well taken. Uh, 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 when we are talking about the vocational and technical training, particularly in the area of uh, shipbuilding, along with the curricula, the specific curricula, do you think it's important to impart highly technical and allied skills and uh, to uh, uh, get the human resource before uh, uh, any sort of a, a new shipyard venture is going to be realized? Certainly. I mean, shipbuilding is a very sophisticated and in this 21st century where there's a junction of technologies, we need to have all tiers of human resource, qualified human resource, starting from a very basic laborer to the highly skilled designer who's going to design the ship and then implementation of all that. We need all tiers. And unfortunately, we don't have uh, enough. I understand so. I think Beria uh, University has now faculty for the, for the maritime affairs. The, on the subject of maritime and then probably Karachi shipyard has a basic technician training school but that is not really enough again if you want to optimize the the potential of this industry we need to gear up the human resource at every level yeah definitely at the different universities like Karachi University the Laspela University and all other universities they must have to come up with Indeed. such uh, things and also uh, there is a sea blindness in uh, north as well you, there must Absolutely. have to be some of the academic institutions to take up such subjects. Absolutely. It is important. You, you, you may, if, if I may, you see, for example, we have polytechnics. Mm. It was a very important tier, less than an uh, engineering faculty. Obviously. Which has been totally eradicated. Yes. Now, unless we, I mean, if you talk of very basic skills like electric, uh, uh, like electrification, like plumbing, if you ask for a qualified plumber, can you get one? Yeah, it's, it's I'm talking of the it's very, it's very, basic skills, really difficult very basic really. skills. Definitely. So today in this 21st century, even to deal with those materials, with this technology, you need to have a technician who has a decent insight about the technical uh, aspect of the, of the product mm. which he or she is going to deal with. Yeah, definitely it is. Emma uh, 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 when we are talking about uh, Pakistan's uh, shell uh, building industry and the uh, uh, building our own uh, cargo and uh, container along with that uh, the uh, other vessels like oil tankers. Uh, do you not think that Pakistan is actually uh, throwing 7 to 10 billion dollars away uh, uh, to the world and uh, we are not much flourished into the shipbuilding industry uh, along with have uh, our own building our own vessels uh, for our uh, 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 merchant shipping and all that. So uh, that's why if we have some of the new shipyards or the shipbuilding industry constructing, producing our own vessels, we can save and even earn billions of dollars from the outer world. 
जी फैसल वेरी दैट आर ओन रिक्वायरमेंट फर्स्ट दैट इज टू बी सीन एंड दैट इज टू बी मेट एट द मोमेंट आर सी कार्गो विच इज अराउंड नाइंटी परसेंट दैट रिक्वायर्स एटलीस्ट अराउंड एटी टू एटी फाइव शिप्स वी शुड हैव of different combinations including the container ships and uh, including the other types of ships but uh, as you rightly pointed out that because of that we are about 9 to 10 billion we are paying in freights so first is that we should have our own capacity in a way that we should be able to have uh, constructed these ships immediately and for that we need to have more shipyards at the moment uh, the shipping industry is booked for about next 3 years 3 to 5 years we don't get a space for constructing or we can go to the world for asking to make our ship so that is the kind of overbooking it has been done so this is a very flourishing industry and we need to uh, expand our base so that concurrently we should be able to make ships first to harness this potential for our own requirements and as per the international rules up to 60% we can have our own shipping made and then we can have from the other countries also but that is the step one but of course once we uh, overcome our deficiency we can always uh, uh, get into the exporting ships as at the moment i highlighted that bangladesh and india and other uh, shipping industry uh, it is coming up uh, and they are exporting the ships definitely taking your word ship export country uh, uh, to be a ship export country rather than just importing and have uh, some uh, meager repairs and all that so uh, uh, sultana once of when we are talking about pakistan's shipping industry why why not uh, uh, the heavy duty commercial ship building in pakistan repair and world class maintenance and all other facilities uh, uh, to be here Uh, at our home uh, so that uh, we convert into a ship exporting country rather than uh, just uh, uh, requesting uh, some other countries to have our ships to be built fellow sir bits and agni you see just uh, now admiral said the uh, sir has mentioned that we are with our own cargo we have a capacity of 85 vessels yes it's an utter shame that pnsc has only i think 12 vessels yes about six of them are to 12, uh, tankers yes. and are, uh, f- five Obviously. or six are ca- cargo vehicles. cargo ships uh, it's a, and uh, pnsc is in profit it's making money so the business is there the potential is there the experience is there the human resources is there i'll revert back again but the problem is that seafarers are actually suffering because so uh, we, are suffering. we are we are actually commissioning lots of seafarers ev- every year and uh, but they are not getting much placements uh, because we don't have ships indeed, and indeed. they are reliant at the uh, international the world to have indeed. ships and uh, indeed, obviously I, like i said it's, uh, it's an agony we have the business we have the potential we have the basic infrastructure we already performing pnsc is performing it's it's very heartening to know that these private sector organizations they are in profit yes and yet we can't expand but despite of that we are giving billions see, of dollars to other shipping right. industry see, to I'm, import our cargo our oil and all other things i'll re- again revert back to my previous comment which i made that unless we hmm. harness and put all this together unless we do that we are doing in bits and pieces hmm. so to optimize the uh, absolute potential of this opportunity we have to put our house in order Definitely, we have to integrate definitely. we have to have a national policy in general a developmental program in which all these infrastructures the strategic industrial infrastructure is going to be part of it obviously and then we can very very our rightly office. said very rightly said admiral said sir uh, when we are talking about uh, made in pakistan regarding the shipping industry uh, made in pakistan ships oil tankers uh, different sort of uh, cargo and uh, container vessels the gas del- delivery vessels along with that some of the uh, naval shipping like corvettes like we have frigates destroyers oil tankers replenishment tankers submarines and all that so why not because uh, pakistan uh, needs right now to have made in pakistan products and we uh, uh, emerge as an exporting country and it is only possible through uh, and even we want to enhance our trade so export led Uh, trade growth is going to be the real uh, benchmark for Pakistan's economy if we intend to grow. Sir, uh, a little uh, addition to the last, uh, uh, I think, discussions. Not only the PNSC, the uh, KPT, as well as the PQA, 
uh, all these three uh, segments of our industry they are in profit uh, that is one example in the you are talking about karachi port trust and uh, port kasim authority kasim authority why i am mentioning this because uh, other uh, areas may be pia may be other uh, they are going into the losses but these are the three uh, examples that they are contributing towards the national exchequer Mm. so it has a great potential so it needs to be realized at the national level that is uh, uh, rightly pointed out uh, coming towards made in pakistan yes of course uh, we we have the potential and we have the capacity to produce but as it was said that the only one karachi shipyard uh, if it is meant, uh, it is uh, making one container ship so we need to uh, broaden our uh, uh, horizontally makes more uh, shipyards so that concurrently we should be able to more ships and be able to add so that is the one's first requirement i think uh, we need to go into not one only in gawadar it has the potential we have already identified four more places so i think one after the other we should have a 25 year 30 year plan in which we should say after how many years we should go for the second third and fourth and and accordingly we should make space for the uh, this policy obviously you are absolutely right tarvi sultana once of when uh, what about the traditional heritage of pakistan which was uh, uh, spread along our coast and that is uh, basically the craftsmen's uh, uh, wooden fishing and uh, cargo vessels these are small in size but very beautiful really yeah. so uh, uh, for domestic and foreign buyers they are doing it all and it is a very lucrative industry but uh, unfortunately getting very meager support because they are just uh, doing this business from the last many years on their own so uh, how do you see this industry as they are delivering right now 30 to 40 vessels a year you see uh, mr fasel uh, it's good to own to your heritage it's it's good to value our traditions but we have to be realistic also again in 21st century building a, a wood uh, based boat is too primitive in this composite material technology where you have polymer you have fiber glass and all i even that i don't think so that's really but since that has been working for years for them there's no input for any technological uh, support to them uh, i think just uh, because of this uh, security reasons we have been encroaching into other uh, territories the uh, pakistan navy had offered kind of and even on a very cheap rate some gps also but they were too conservative even to have them on the boards mm. so they need to be educated the fisherman has to be educated definitely it also uh, all about technology for example we are they are depriving themselves of uh, in uh, not going to the deep waters to catch more fish mm. uh, more fish you know the so we have to we have to totally revamp uh, uh, and this sector needs to be addressed and we have to bring in the new technology we have to we maybe pa pakistan engineering shipyard has another division for these small boats uh, to facilitate our fishermen in that area yeah definitely you are absolutely right but uh, the thing is that we have to uh, take our fishermen along with the technology that is very mm -hmm. important very it important. is uh, the duty of uh, the state as well and the state institutions along with that uh we have to keep this heritage also because okay. uh, uh uae and all other countries they have preserved this heritage because this is the symbol of uh, uh, our uh, actually uh, traditions culture which is going on and some of the livelihoods of the people would also be uh, saved i think so with that but uh, no doubt you are absolutely right that we yes. require technology and all that uh, i think to so, just to add on i would say that if you go to gawadar and you see the fishing i mean it's so beautiful uh, at uh, almost dusk or at dawn time that site i would obviously. even just that uh, maybe one of these institutions can have a small museum where we can preserve we can have some of those boards some of those workmanships uh, workmen who have been but uh, i think building. so that that heritage must have to be uh, taken in account related to the sea tourism maritime tourism Definitely, because certainly, uh, ultimately certainly. that yes. would flourish through yes. this traditional things and they were oh, they will be going to engage as well yes. into yes. the liv livelihoods and all that Indeed. so that we will uh, serve the purpose yes. actually yes. so uh, uh, tanvi sultana once up uh, pakistan going through an economic crisis you know uh, that ship building industry can earn and save billions of, for pakistan so uh, when it comes to revenue the foreign exchange uh, create jobs alleviate poverty uh, then why not uh, we are much focusing on this area is it ignorance as you have rightly pointed out about the will or uh, uh, something else like that 
Mr. Faisal, the question is again political stability. You know, automatically things would prior prioritize if things are in hand. Hmm. But if the governments are struggling just to make the merry go round, how can you expect? Obviously. Just, just see our uh, current affairs time from 6 to 9. Hmm. You see what all is being debated. Yes. Can you see anything constructed being it's, discussed it's and very deliberated? Or it's has very any, any political party has shown any developmental agenda, any national developmental program? I would say making use of this forum. Mm -hmm. I would say there should be a national developmental program which should be irrespective of any political consideration. Like we have defense, we have nuclear programs, so many other where there's no political interference. So there should be a national developmental program in which all this, like in initially in the initial years of Pakistan, we had that five years developmental program. If you see and read that program, I think only two or two and a half of those programs could be implemented. There were seven programs. And in 35 years, Pakistan would or should have been self-sufficient in all these areas Obviously. if those plans were implemented. Yes. So we have that plan. I probably, I think Korea for adapted that the same plan and they carried on with that. So Obviously. we have done, we have the cap capability and the capacity. We should forget for God is forgone. I mean, we should look forward and move forward. But I think so that we have to be very but optimistic at the national level and we are, uh, and we are uh, doing wonders. But unfortunately, as you have rightly pointed out that at least the private media, uh, but they have to uh, look into that uh, there are lots of positivities of Pakistan, uh, which must have to be highlighted. And uh, we have to uh, come to the point that uh, where we can progress and we can go further. And that is very important. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Tanvir Sultan Awansab. Thank you very much for your presence in the studios. Thank very candid views. Yeah. Thank you very much. Always Thank pleasure you. to have you here. And uh, uh, Admiral, uh, Vice Admiral Retired Ahmed Saeed Sahib, thank you very much for your presence online and uh, for your uh, very elaborative and very important views on uh, uh, shipbuilding industry particularly. Thank you very much for that. Uh, viewers, uh, maritime sector uh, is the prime source of uh, new growth, employment and social cohesion. Uh, just look into the world statistics that uh, uh, the world uh, gross domestic product uh, grew eight times during last 50 years, but the sea trade grew 13 times in last 50 years. This shows, literally shows the importance of the blue economy and particularly uh, one of its area that is the shipbuilding industry. It means that, and as our panelists suggested, that Pakistan has to, uh, must ha have to have uh, that political stability which is direly needed uh, to flourish our economy, particularly the blue economy. And when it comes to the uh, shipbuilding industry, it is again very important that uh, uh, heavy debt tonnage uh, ships, at least uh, to the level of uh, 600,000 tons, uh, must have to be uh, built in Pakistan. And for that matter, uh, the Gawada is the one of the lucrative places where uh, a, a shipyard is uh, already under consideration. That must have to be there, that must have to be started because ultimately that is going to pay Pakistan a real dividend of the blue economy. Uh, Port Qasim is again a real site and all other sites which are uh, uh, having uh, the zero altitude uh, so that that is going to be uh, beneficial for Pakistan to have more shipyards over there. Uh, so it's a great recipe of the economic and human development. Uh, export-led growth and social uplift and obviously uh, that ultimately gives Pakistan's, uh, Pakistan a real pro prosperity for which everyone is waiting for. This is today's uh, foresight. It's time to sign off. Allah Hafiz